Hi, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got the Ambernick RG556. I've had this for about a week and I've been playing around with it. I haven't done anything other than um, the, the out of the box stock. I haven't done anything else. So let's just have a quick unboxing and we'll uh, get on to see what it can do. Okay, so basic box. It is white again instead of tan. I did notice that. And it's silver instead of the silver inlay instead of the gold. But it's just the box. I did get the transparent blue. I did get the transparent blue. So not much on the box. Inside the box, of course, is the unit. I did get the 256 gigabyte card. We've got our wipes, our screen protector, and our manual. Just gives you some hot keys and some basic stuff. I'm going to go over the key mapping a bit because. I don't know about anybody else out there, but I found it confusing for a while, so I figured I'd just uh, quickly go over it. I have uh, what Gungeon Impact and um, yeah, Diablo Immortal, and I map both of those, so I will go over that. Okay, so let's put that aside. I'll put the put the screen cover on in a second here. Let's pull this out and have a look at this. Do I get the transparent blue? zoom in a bit on it and um, it is kind of it feels really good the plastic feels kind of slick but um, you know like I've been using it for a while and uh, you can you know there are some fingerprints on it but I like how transparent it is it's really cool uh, the buttons I find are really good I really like the, the joysticks the d-pad no problem with it. It's really good. I really like these buttons. The the triggers up top are really good. The screen is nice and big and bright. So a quick walk around. We have our. They have a. It's a, a quick launch for your front end for your your games, and your back your home button, your uh, select and start, the two joysticks of course, your D-pad which I find really good colored buttons and uh, they're all going to the colored now so you know the blue red yellow and green looks really good the front's really nice on the bottom we have our, our power and our speaker our headphone jack and our TF card slot on the top we have fan exit air because it would be sucking in down here we have our volume and our power and our triggers up top and again this is our analog so they accelerate on the sides really have nothing so that's that's the walk around it feels really good in the hands okay so um put the screen protector on we'll turn it on and we'll have a look okay so i got the screen protector on that's put in the the tf card the game card With this I found it's not actually upside down now. It's right side up, so they stopped putting it so it was upside down, which is neat. Okay, let's turn it on. There was also uh, a charger right here, a charging cable in the box too, which I didn't uh, unbox, but you, you do get a, a charging cable. Okay, so it's turned on, didn't take too long. So as you can see, my Wi-Fi set up, um, time set and all that, and uh, 
I didn't change the background or anything. This is everything that comes preloaded. You've got, you know, your Ether SX, your Citra, your PSP. This is all stuff that came loaded. I haven't changed it all. I haven't changed anything to, um, and then I have downloaded Gungeon Impact and um, Diablo Immortal Play Store. Um, so that basically, other than other than those two, it's stock. I haven't even put YouTube or email on this. So this is basically because I wanted to show it as it is right out of the box before I did too much to it. But I wanted to I wanted to play with it a bit just to uh, see how it compared to the Retroid uh, Pocket 4 Pro. So with setting up and right out of the box I'm ready to go now like to play you just hit that button and you're ready to go okay your games are there you don't have to do anything whereas with the Retroid Pocket Pro you have to uh, you have to get you have to uh, download all well, all the all the emulators are loaded and you have to there is a front end but you have to load your ROMs you have to find your BIOSes you have to set it all up so right off the bat this is more I think user friendly and of course you can um you can um, you can how do we do this right settings you can change your themes just like the themes on all of them right so that one one I'm not gonna go through them because they they haven't changed them they've just um, Thomas wave and then of course you have your it's just all different Okay, so I'm just going to go back to style 1, default, because that's just where I'm going to keep it for now, just for ease. And um, as you can tell, I'll go all the way back to the start, you get all, you get yeah, NES, SNES, uh, PC Engine, Capcom 1, Sega Genesis, Nintendo, uh, uh, SNK, Neo Geo, uh, Nintendo, Super Family Con, uh, Capcom, CPS2, Sony, uh, Sony PlayStation, so PlayStation 1, Sega Genesis, uh, Nintendo 64, Capcom 3, uh, MAME, uh, Nintendo Game Boy Color, Dreamcast, 85 games in that one, so that's pretty cool. Uh, and yeah, you can see all the games below. There is a lot of games in here. And the one thing that surprises me, usually from, usually from, um, Amberneck, your your main you only get like 71 games there's 1366 games in your main here 85 in dreamcast so that's most of them and you have your uh you have your neo geo pocket your sega namoy seven games wonder swan you have your ps2 you have your final burn alpha and there's a thousand games in there so that's more arcade type games Game Boy Advance, the Thomas Wave, uh, Sony PlayStation, Nintendo uh, uh, DS. Uh, then you have your 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 Wii and your NGC and your 3DS. And I haven't done anything. I'm just playing straight out of the box. I did go in and I messed up because I I, I I figured I'd play around with it. The PS2 um, emulator and I, and I messed it up. I stuck it on fast forward. And I had to go in, and it took me about 20 minutes to uh, figure out how to get it back to right. But if right out of the box, if you just leave it at all place, no problem. Okay, so that's this software. Um, if you drag down from the top, you obviously you get your Android stuff, right? Uh, I'll try to keep the fingerprints to a minimum, but it's kind of hard. So you've got your internet, you've got your your um, this this is your if you want to go into your games here, this is this button right here. These two. 
Bluetooth, you're, I'm going to go over that, the key mapping, because that confused me and I figured it out. Uh, auto rotate. Um, I really didn't notice a performance difference. Um, night and day, and fan. So that's off. Auto. And you can hear that's the strong fan. So I usually just leave it on auto. Ambient lighting, Xbox, so you got your Xbox and your any uh, and your Nintendo. Do not disturb airplane mode screen and that. So if you notice I have no lights on here. So you just long press that and you can turn that on and then you can bring them up if you want them. You can change the lighting modes. Okay. So that's all controlled in there. So I just turn that off. So they are there. So again, that's just in ambient lighting, long press, and there's your controls for your sticks. Okay. So that's what I wanted to do there. Um, that's a, a little, well, you have your, you have your Chrome files, photos and settings. And with settings, it's just like, um, it's just like your Android, any Android settings, your uh, update is in there. So hit B to come out no yeah, there we go and then uh, in here we have all of our emulators and then we have retroarch moonlight and then the two games you download play store and with play store it's just play store i don't use this other one here so i'm not even going to go into it so that's the walk around with the software and let's play some games Looks really good. said how the game set it up. I didn't change anything. Oh no, I changed it to widescreen 60 by 9 and enable the shaders. But next to that, and that's easy to do, it's not hard. I'll go in and I'll show you how to do that. But I'm not seeing any problems here whatsoever playing. It's comfortable in the hands. Strengthens the soul of 
Okay, so um, that's some of the that's the the front end playing games I played a bunch of the harder ones because of all what's going on. I'm not going to do any of the. I'm not going to touch Nintendo for right now. I'm just going to leave it. I'm just going to play all the other ones. They do work. Uh, the DS, the the 3DS games, the DS, all the Nintendo that comes loaded with this card works. And that's all I'm going to say. It works well. Okay. Um, so far, if you're just here, to, if you just if you just bought it to. Uh, play all this if you just want to play all of this um this is hands down a thousand times better than the the, the retroid pocket 4 pro for the simple fact that it's set up and ready to go um once it's set up and ready to go it plays the same for all of these okay so um let's go out of this and what i want to do right now is one thing that i had trouble with was with um the the key mapper and um, i might have just not found the right instructions or just uh read too much into it or uh, just basically did not under excuse me understand it or i was just plain stupid but i figured i would do this because i've never seen anybody kind of go over how the key mapper works and i'm going in here because it's just I think the simplest one to use. So I'm going to zoom this into the screen so you can see how it's done. Okay. So as you can see right now, there is uh, the key to move is right here. Okay. So to get the key mapper, you pull it down all the way, press and hold, and then it pops up here. Okay, so this is the reset. This is so once you get in and you get your buttons and you see how um, you've got your R1, R2 start, you got your select, you got all that. Okay, so now the only way to move this person is is with the on-screen stuff here. So what you need to do is you need to go to button configuration and there's no, um, you can just pick them up and move them, right? So you just go down and this is your left joystick, right? So you just push that there and see how the left joystick is there and you just move it over the control put the B down there and save save and back and hide see so because I slid it down over there now I can move and as soon as I get my attack button because I put my I knew where to put my attack button so now I can bring that down and bring up the key mapper. See how that's over that, the B is there. It's not quite on the right spot. See, so you, if I move it off, it's not gonna work. So by putting that there, the B presses the B. So as you go along, what you need to do is you need to put your buttons. Your A is gonna be out here somewhere. I've played the game a bit. Your Y, your y is gonna be over here. You, you, you get to pick what you want, right? You want your your R1. Your R, your R1 is going to go down here. Your R2 is going to go down here. And then your R at left 2 is going to go somewhere over here. As you get it. And then you can just move the buttons around. You hit save. Right? You hide and exit. And they're all going to work. Right? So now I can move. And I can attack with that button. And that's how the key mapper works. And it took, I don't know, maybe I'm just stupid, but it took me a while to get that. And the mapping, now that I understand how to do it, and I hope my mapping was helpful for you, that you just... Okay, there we go. So now I'm going towards the... The right spot. That, so let's jump up here. And 
Okay, so Gungeon Impact plays, I think, really well. Okay, so I did figure out how to make that work. So um, when you're in your key mapping and you want two, two buttons, so I put the R2 for that and then I put this over top. And then I hit save and close. So now when I hit the R2, I can now move it. I can move it with this, see? And then I can attack, okay? So that works. Get to safety. I'll find the villagers. Okay, my final thoughts. I've played um, I played some retro games in the in the front end that comes with it, all loaded right out of the box. And I've played Gungeon Impact and Diablo Immortal. I've showed a little bit on the key mapping, which was a big revelation for me. Um, which out of the box, the RG five five six is amazing. It feels good. It handles good. It holds good. Um, the fan, I've never really heard it kick in. Uh, it didn't get hot in my hands. I've been playing with it for about a week now. Um, and I'm uh, actually really, really, really impressed with it. I like how it holds. I like. I definitely like the speakers. I like I like the buttons. Um, the, the plastic, um, it feels weird, but it's good. Like, it's good and solid. Like, there's no twist, no bend to it. Um, get a case. I suggest you get a case because once you get this, you will be taking it everywhere with you because it can do everything. If you if you download your email, you download your YouTube, you know, you, you've got basically a mini tablet and the screen is big, it's nice, it's bright. Like this is as bright as the screen goes, um, I think. it's uh, so, so that is as bright as the screen goes. Okay, so that's pretty bright. And then we'll... Um, We'll take it down as low as it can go. And that's as low as it can go. So outside in the sun, I don't think it's going to be a problem. I've been keeping it about three quarters. I've been keeping it about three quarters. What did I, oh, nine on tail, there we go. So that's where I've been keeping that. Um, I think the screen is great. Uh, it plays everything I threw at it, like all of the all of the Dreamcast games, all of the PS1 games that are loaded on the card. Like I said, I'm not going to show any Nintendo stuff because of what's going on, but um, it played everything that came with the card really good. Um, no settings that needed. It's all set right out of the box. So plug and play, I guess you could say. This thing is pretty good. It's 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 well worth the money. Um, for plug and play, it, out of the box, it's better than the. The, the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro um, that is a little more powerful than this um, with its um, Dimension 1100 chip and this just has the the Unisoc 820 I do believe and um, this one is just out of the box good to go it handles good the card goes in I've had no trouble with it it looks good like um, the back is nice you can see everything um, I have nothing but good things to say about this. Uh, the key mapper works great now that I know how to use it, and, and I, I feel stupid that I didn't figure it out before. I figured out the key mapper, now everything's, it just opens everything up once you get that key mapper, and I'm, I'm hoping I'm not the only one who had trouble with that key mapper. Um, so this is a must. If, you, if, you're looking, if you're looking for a single handheld to have to do everything, and do it well right out of the box. I think you're looking at the Ar the Ambernick um, 556. It's just got everything you need. Okay, well, that's my quick open box, quick play, quick review of the Ambernick RG 556. Thanks for stopping by, and we'll catch you next time.